Good morning and welcome back to uh, this course on classics in total synthesis. Um, so far in the last three lectures, uh, we had a lot of uh, introduction about organic synthesis, uh, total synthesis uh, and so on. So now we will actually go into the you know topics. Uh, first let us start with uh, total synthesis of natural products having three membered ring. So when you talk about three membered ring. Um, not only natural products have three membered ring as core structure, but they also will have other rings. So, what we will do, we will talk about how these three membered rings are made for these natural products and also other rings and as a result and in the end how they have done the total synthesis. So, today's lecture we will talk about two natural products, uh, they are called illudin M and illudin C. And both the natural products you can see here, there is a cyclopropane here, there is a cyclopropane here and in illudin C you have a cyclopropane this side. Okay. So normally when you talk about cyclopropanes, what are the normal standard methods to make the remembered ring? One is if you have a beta diketone, 1, 3 diketone or beta keto ester, then one can think of a SN2 displacement reaction, double SN2 displacement reaction uh, with 1 to dibromo compound, 1 to dihalo compound. Okay? That is one of the easiest way to make a three membered ring. Then if you have a diazo compound, if you have a diazo compound, then you can do a cyclopropination on a double bond. Okay? That is also quite simple and straightforward. Then one can think about the uh, Simon Smith reaction. So, that was uh, nicely exploited by Andrew Charith in uh, asymmetric cyclopropanation, which we will discuss uh, tomorrow in one of the total synthesis. And if you have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, okay, if you have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, sulfur elides, particularly dimethyl sulfoxonium elide, can undergo a 1,4 addition and in the end it can form a cyclopropane. So, these are the four standard methods in literature if you see widely used for making cyclopropanes. But as I said in this particular synthesis we not only talk about how to make cyclopropane, but also how other rings can be made. Okay? So, let us move to the real natural product. So, illudines, you know there are many uh, illudines, uh, here I show a few illudines like illudin A, illudin B, illudin M and S. All of them you can see having three rings, two are fused together that is uh, the six membered and five membered they are fused together and here the six and five, six and three they are spiro fused together. Okay? Spiro fused. And most of them, you know, they are very closely related. Only the functional groups are, you know, uh, located at different places. Otherwise, you know, uh, they have the common basic skeleton, six membered, five membered, and three membered, and they are also oxygenated. In the first case, you can see there are three oxygens, and second case also you can see three oxygen, uh, whereas in the fourth one, illudin B, you see four oxygens. So, they are all isolated from several fungi and as I said uh, it has uh, several degree of uh, unsaturation and a unique tricyclic ring, ring system. So, these are the uh, references if you want to see how they were isolated, they are quite old and there are few more illudines, um, you can see illudin C, illudin C2 and C3. Okay, they differ by the presence of OH okay. and again they have the same same structure, okay, same core structure and illudinic acid where the CH2OH is further oxidized you have the carboxylic acid and this is another natural product called 6 hydroxymethyl acyl fulvin. So, the fulvin you can see here this is the fulvin subunit of this natural product. 
then you also have oxidized version ok. So, you know there are two or three hydroxyl groups in eludines and some compounds these hydroxyl groups are further oxidized. For example, here the, the hydroxyl group is oxidized to ketone again you can see the same thing here the hydroxyl group is oxidized to ketone. And then they show a very good biological activity particularly it shows selective toxicity for tumor cells compared to normal cells and um, particularly the oxidized analog this is uh, has been shown to be less toxic than eludine yeah, to mice actually ok. Now, let us go through uh, directly uh, uh, the synthesis of uh, eludine M and C before that how these eludines are acting. So, the mechanism act action for eludines one should know. So, if you know that then it is also easy to make analogs of uh, eludines. So, what happens it undergoes you know one four addition basically when your compound has a Michael acceptor you can see that there is a Michael acceptor here ok alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Then the, the DNA with the nucleophile can attack in a one four fashion you can see that it undergoes a one four fashion. Then if you look at your substrate you also have a cyclopropane and next to a carbon having hydroxyl group you have a cyclopropane next to carbon having a hydroxyl group. So, what will happen once you do this 1 4 addition the double bond shifts here ok. You, you get already you see there are two double bonds ok there are two double bonds ok formed. Now, the another DNA molecule when it attacks the cyclopropane as you know cyclopropanes are like double bonds ok it can undergo ring opening. So, when it attacks the cyclopropane then this hydroxyl group can come out as water thereby you make this compound as an aromatic compound ok. So, that is the driving force for the overall mechanism of action of eludines ok. So, even when you want to design something similar to this you should keep this in mind it is not only for eludines, but also other natural products having similar skeleton. Now, let us start with uh, eludine M first the total synthesis of eludine M was reported by Frederick Kinder almost 28 years ago ok. So, it was a 6 step total synthesis and they used 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition between a carbonyl elide 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition between a carbonyl elide and cyclopentenone ok carbonyl elide and cyclopentenone as the key reaction to construct the tricyclic compound. Okay, the, the key tricyclic compound was constructed by reaction between carbonyl elide and cyclopentenone ok. And of course, the carbonyl elides are normally made from diisoketone. I will come back to that how carbonyl elides are made and what is 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition before we actually move to the total synthesis. The other natural product which we will discuss under 3 member ring is eludine C. So, this was reported uh, uh, 20 years ago by Raymond Fang and he took about 10 steps and with a high overall yield of 8.2 percent to make this combo ok. Here he used another 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition in the earlier case carbonyl elide acted as a dipole dipole whereas in this case a nitrile oxide the nitrile oxide was used as a dipole and nitrile oxide olefin cycloaddition as the key reaction to make the 5 member ring ok. So, this is the starting material and you can see the addition of lithium species to this ketone followed by nitrile oxide formation from this oxime and intramolecular dipolar cycloaddition gives this tricyclic compound and that can be converted into eludine C. We will discuss this in details in the subsequent slides. Before that what I want to discuss is if you look at these two natural products there are key reactions and there are key starting materials. So, how they are made ok that we we will have some discussion so that it will be useful when you talk about the total synthesis. So, what is the key reaction if you look at in the both synthesis 
the key reaction is 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition, okay, 1. And what is the key intermediate which is used in eludine M and you will see in one case we have used nitril oxide, in the other case we have used carbonyl ele. So, what we do in the next few minutes is what is one, we will discuss what is 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition and what is carbonyl elide. So, what can, uh, what one can do with carbonyl elide and we also see how nitrile oxide can be generated and what nitrile oxide can do. So, first let us start with 1,3 uh, dipolar cyclo addition reaction, okay. And when you talk about 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition reaction, it is like diel salt reaction, but 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition is known before uh, 4 plus 2 cyclo addition that is the uh, diel salt reaction is known. So, 1,3 dipole, okay, it is a 3 carbon unit, okay, having a dipole and it adds to an alkene, okay, these alkenes are called dipolarophile, okay. In diel salt reaction it is called diene and dienophile, okay, here it is called dipole and dipolarophile. So, when they react together the product, the reaction is called 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition reaction, obviously when you add 3 plus 2 you get 5 ohm battery. Okay. So, that is a, a basic thing about 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition. The first 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition was reported in 1988 by Buchner. Okay. The reaction was between this alpha beta and saturated ester and diazo acetic ester. Okay. So, that underwent a 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition to give this 5 ohm battery. That was the first 1,3 dipolar cyclo addition reported in literature. Then 10 years later, so nitrones were discovered, okay. nitrones are also you know this is called nitrone. Okay. So, nitrones were discovered in 1898 and in the early 20th century Werner and Buss discovered nitrile oxides. Okay. And when you talk about dipole, 1,3 dipole, see this 1,3 dipole can exist in two, two forms. One, it can be like allyl anion, okay. See if you have allyl group, so this is like allyl anion, but since it is an, it is an elide, it is a dipole, you should also have a positive charge like this. So, that is why either it can be like this or you can you know you can write another canonical structure. Okay. So, this is one form of dipole. Another form of dipole is linear. So, that is if you have a triple bond, if you have a triple bond you can see that if you have a triple bond then the triple bond the atom uh, the atom which is attached to one of one of the triple bond can bear the positive charge then adjacent oxygen or whatever uh, it can be nitrogen, sulphur, the adjacent heteroatom should bear the negative charge. So, these are the two types of dipoles one can see in the literature one is allyl anion type another one is propargyl anion type. So, we are going to talk about carbonyl elide and we are also going to talk about nitrile, or nitrile oxide. So, carbonyl elide belongs to this, and nitrile oxide belongs to this. Okay. So, nitrile oxide is used for synthesis of eludine C, and the other one is used for eludine M. Okay. And when we talk about carbonyl elide how carbonyl elides are generated. First of all what is an elide? Elide is a substance where you will have carbon having negative charge and the adjacent atom that is the heteroatom having a positive charge, is not it? Carbon atom should have negative charge, the adjacent heteroatom should have positive charge. So, now if you take a diazo compound and then if you have a carbonyl group either within this within the substrate or you add extra, okay. then this, this is basically it will form a carbene is not it. Once the nitrogen goes it will form a carbene 
and immediately the lone pair on the nitrogen will attack so that it will become positive charge and this will become negative charge okay so that is how carbonyl elides are generated and <coughs> for generation of such carbonyl elides you need transition metals okay uh, there are two transition metals which are used routinely to make or generate such carbonyl elides <coughs> first it goes through carbonides then it forms the carbonyl elides what are those two metals one is copper other one is rhodium okay these are the two metals you can see in the literature routinely being used to form carbonyl elides so now let us see one example how carbonyl elides are made say for example if you take this carboxylic acid <coughs> having an ester now when you treat with oxalate chloride it forms the corresponding acid chloride subsequently when you treat this with diisomethane it forms the corresponding diisoketone now if you look at this it has a carbonyl group which is in the same substrate okay and if you add a rhodium metal dirhodium tetracetate okay dirhodium tetracetate it forms this rhodium carbonide okay it forms this rhodium carbonide okay now what will happen this is like carbene but it's not really carbene rhodium carbonide then immediately this lone pair can attack and then form the corresponding carbonyl elide okay so this is what it will form once the carbonyl elide is formed then you can do dipolar cycloaddition with various dipolar files for example if you do this with n methyl n phenyl melimide then you get this 13 dipolar cycloaddition attack you can see so this is the dipolar file and here here originally you had the dipole so that undergoes dipolar cycloaddition to give this bicyclic system okay likewise nitrile oxide nitrile oxide can be generated from uh, two different starting material one is oxime other one is from nitro compound so once you have an oxime treat with any chlorinating agent when you treat treat with chlorinating agent first a monochlorination takes place then followed by elimination of hcl in the presence of bases like triethylamine you get the corresponding nitrile oxide then the second method which is also widely used is nitro alkyl here what you need is a dehydrating agent so one of the most widely used dehydrating agent for making nitrile oxide is phenyl isocyanate so the phenyl isocyanate removes water molecule from this and gives nitrile oxide so once you have nitrile oxide then as i said you can do a dipolar cycloaddition with any alkene so if you use trans alkene and you can get see the trans product and if you use cis alkene you will get cis product now once you made this if you use rane nickel so rane nickel is known to cleave this no bond rane nickel is known to cleave this no bond and afterwards aqueous work up will also hydrolyze the imine to give kit so now if you look at this product what is this product this product is nothing but aldol okay so indirectly what you are doing is you are doing an aldol reaction with starting with nitrile oxide and alkene that is it undergoes a 13 dipolar cycloaddition followed by reductive cleavage with rane nickel okay so nitrile oxide and carbonyl elides carbonyl elides are routinely used in 13 dipolar cycloaddition and one can also use lah lah what it does it not only it cleaves a no bond but also reduces the c double bond n so you get the corresponding amino alcohol okay so with this introduction on 13 dipolar cycloaddition carbonyl elide and nitrile oxide now we will go to the real total synthesis of eludine m and eludine c first let us start with eludine m so when you look at this eludine m okay as i said the 
it goes through carbonyl halide and one three dipolar cyclo addition. So, this final target molecule illudine can be obtained from this tetracyclic compound in 2 to 3 steps ok. How? 1 if you reduce this if you reduce this you get a hydroxyl group. But before that you have to open this how you do if you treat with a base ok then it can open up the oxa bridge. If you treat with the base you can open up the oxa bridge. So, you can see this double bond can be formed and this will become hydroxyl group that hydroxyl group can be oxidized. Second the elimination ok the elimination will give you the required double bond. So, this is the precursor for illudine ok it takes maybe 2 or 3 steps. Then if you look at this carefully this is nothing but a carbonyl elide and a dipole ok. So, this will attack here and this will attack. So, that will form the 5 membered ring ok. Now, now your job is how you generate this diazo carbonyl elide. This carbonyl elide can be easily generated from the diazo ketone ok. Now, let us see how this diazo ketone is prepared ok. That is very easy as I said when you whenever you have beta keto ester or 1 3 diketones then one can use a SN2 displacement reaction. So, for example, if you take methyl acetoacetate or ethyl acetoacetate then treat with base like potassium hydroxide in the presence of uh, phase transfer catalyst 1 to dibromethane will give the cyclopropane. So, it is easy to introduce the cyclopropane. Since you are using potassium hydroxide the ester also gets hydrolyzed and you get the corresponding carboxylic acid. It is a well known reaction and it works very well. Now, the acid the carboxylic acid can be easily converted into diacetone in 2 steps. One treat with oxalyl chloride it forms the oxalyl uh, corresponding acid chloride. Second step you treat with diazomethane you get the corresponding diazoketone. So, basically as you look at in this scheme this methyl acetoacetate is very cheap it is available in you know plenty in ton scale one can buy. In 3 steps one can make the starting material which is required for making the carbonyl elite ok that is the first fragment. For the second fragment what you should do you should start from ethyl adipate. So, ethyl adipate again it is a commercially available compound and in one step one can make this uh, 2 methyl cyclopentanone with ester at alpha position. Now, you reduce the ester as well as the carbonyl group that is ketone to get a diol. You have a primary alcohol and secondary alcohol ok. What we have seen is you need a dimethyl group. So, this CH2OH can be selectively tosylated in the presence of secondary alcohol ok. It is easy to tosylate. Now, if you treat with LAH the tosyl group will go and you introduce the methyl group ok. So, now you have two methyl groups what you need is you have to oxidize the hydroxyl group introduce the double bond and also introduce the bromine. So, simple oxidation a Jones oxidation of course, one can use other oxidizing agents. Then treat with bromine in the presence of lithium chloride and DMF when you heat it bromination followed by dehydrobromination takes place that is how you introduce the double bond. Having introduced the double bond now you need one leaving group at this position ok because that is how you introduce the double bond. So, that can be done under you know peroxide condition NBS and the peroxide you can easily introduce this bond. So, now you have made both the fragments one diacetone and enone. What you need to do take the diacetone treat with dirhodium tetracetate and cyclopentenone. So, then it will undergo first the formation of carbonyl elide then immediately it will undergo 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition reaction. So, take the diacetone 
and then treat with rhodium uh, acetate, you get the car corresponding carbonyl, and then it forms the carbonyl eli, and you treat with uh, cyclopentenone, and it undergoes the 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition to form this compound. Very simple, straightforward. Okay, then once this is formed, you need to. Okay, of course, this can be drawn like this also. Okay. Once this is formed, what you do, you you have to add a Grignard reagent. Okay, you have to add a Grignard reagent. So now there are two ketones, one as well as here. Between these two, this is sterically less hindered. This is sterically less hindered. So Grignard addition takes place at this ketone, and you get the corresponding tertiary alkyl. Okay. Next step is the removal of not only removal of uh, this oxygen uh, oxo bridge, but also when you treat with base potassium hydroxide and methanol, it undergoes an SN2 displacement of this compound, SN2 displacement of this bromine. So, you get a methoxy group and this one opens and you get a hydroxyl group. Understand? This opens and you get oxygen bridge and the bromate undergoes SN2 displacement with methanol. Now if you oxidize, there is only one alcohol which can be oxidized, other one is tertiary alcohol and during that condition elimination also takes place and you introduce the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Okay. Now there are two ketones, okay. I should say both are enones. Okay. And selectively one can reduce one of them, but it is very difficult. Okay. One can think of reducing one of them selectively, but it is very difficult. So when you treat with LAH, it reduces both. Okay. It reduces both. However, when you oxidize, okay, when you try to oxidize this alcohol, you get eludin M as the major product. Okay. And the other one can be recycled, you know you can again reduce it, again you can reduce it, you get the dihydroxy compound, the dihydroxy compound can be oxidized uh, with a, to a mixture of eludine M and this compound. So that is how the eludine M was synthesized where the carbonyl elide was used as the key intermediate and 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition was used as a key reaction. So now we will move to the next natural product called eludine C. And here the idea is to use a nitrile oxide cycloaddition. So if you look at this compound, this enone, it can be prepared from this 5 membered ring. So if you cleave this NO bond, you get a CH2OH and this also will get hydrolyzed to ketone followed by elimination, one can get this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And this one can be easily obtained by this intramolecular nitrile oxide olefin cycloaddition reaction. Okay. And this in turn can be obtained from the corresponding hydroxyl amine, okay. so bromine source and you get this. And here these two fragments addition of this lithio species to this ketone will give you the precursor for the nitrile oxide formation. Okay. Now let us see how these two fragments are made. First you can start with the corresponding ketone or you can make it as enol, TA, enol TS ether. Basically what you are doing is a wills mayer hawk reaction, treat with PO, POBR3 and DMF and you get this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde with a bromine atom at the beta, beta position, so standard wills mayer hawk reaction. Okay. Only thing is the ketone you start with enol ether. Then once you have aldehyde, convert that into oxyme simply by treating with hydroxylamine, you get the corresponding oxyme. Now you have bromine and that bromine should be exchanged with lithium. So best way to do is tertiary butyl lithium, I will come to that later. And before that the other fragment, it is very easy to make from the corresponding 1,3 diketone acetyl acetone, okay. then you do cyclopropanation, you get this, it is also commercially available. Then 
reduce one of them since this is a symmetrical compound one of them can be selectively reduced to get the hydroxyl group. Now this ketone can be you need a double bond is not it. So, either this ketone can be converted in double bond or you can do dehydration to get the double bond there are two possibilities. So, what they did this hydroxyl group was converted into iodide okay, using this reaction then DBU eliminated that to get the corresponding double bond. Okay. So, this is how uh, you know in 3 steps you know, one could make this uh, starting material. Once you have these 2 fragments the next step is to generate the lithium species and add to this ketone. Okay. How do you generate normally lithium exchange can be done with n butyl lithium or with tertiary butyl lithium. So, they use ter 3 equivalents of tertiary butyl lithium you should know why 3 equivalents of tertiary butyl lithium, butyl lithium is required. 2 equivalents are required to exchange the bromine and one more equivalent is required to remove the OH. So, it adds to this ketone and you get this compound which is the precursor for the, the dipolar cycle addition uh, intermediate that is nitrile oxide. Now, you treat this with chloramine T. Okay, chloramine T is a chlorine source. So, chlorination followed by elimination you generate this nitrile oxide. So, once you generate this nitrile oxide then it is ideally the double bond is ideally situated for the nitrile oxide olefin cycloaddition reaction. So, that takes place to give your tetracyclic compound. Okay. So, very high yielding reaction you can see 99 percent yield. Okay. Then as I said you have to cleave the NO bond and hydrolyze the imine. So, that can be done with Rana nickel, okay, Rana nickel cleaves the NO bond and hydrolyzes and you get the beta hydroxy ketone. Okay, it is an aldol like reaction, beta hydroxy ketone. Once you have this beta hydroxy ketone, the next step is to introduce a double bond. Okay. So, that is very easy convert the hydroxyl group into a good leaving group. So, here the good leaving group is methyl group straight with methyl, methyl chloride triethylamine you got you convert the hydroxyl into methylate then upon treatment with DBU the elimination takes place that is how you synthesize eludin C. Again if you look at this whole process the number of steps is only 6 in 6 steps total synthesis of eludin C is accomplished. Though in both cases the cyclopropane is formed by double displacement reaction the focus was more on the other rings making the 5 member and 6 member ring and both cases a dipolar cycloaddition was successfully used. So, to summarize if you see in the first case carbonyl elide was used as a dipole 1 3 dipole and 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition reaction with the cyclopentenone gave this tetracyclic compound which in few steps was converted into iliodinium. In the second case where you can see a, the nitrile oxide precursor was made in two steps from this ketone and the bromine and intramolecular nitrile oxide cycle addition gave this intermediate which was converted into iliodine C in a couple of steps. Okay. So, these are the two uh, natural products having cyclopropane we discussed and tomorrow we will discuss another natural product having more cyclopropanes and then we will move to 4 member. Okay. Thank you.